Hi everyone, welcome back. Today, I'm destroying my car. That's pretty good work. What do you say? It was like 30 minutes or so? If that. 30 it minutes? faster with beer. It's, yeah, it would have been faster. With, well, it would have been slower with beer, to be fair. But um, yeah, like 30 minutes, two guys, two drills, and uh, the body's gone completely. So this gives us a lot of... Hello. Hello. I did my homework. Thank you. This uh, gives you a good idea. Oh, the boys are out here. Good. <laughs> It, yeah, it gives us a really good idea of really bad crash at the scale. Yeah, it was really bad. The scale of the bent rear is far worse than I had imagined because the rail here on the right side is straight, and this one is like that way. And you look over here, and it's the same story. It's that rail straight, this rail is that way. So the whole rear is kicked over. I don't know how I missed it, to be honest with you, but. I mean, like I said, if you don't have the stock rear rails, it's so hard to measure because all the datum points on a stock chassis is based off of that. But I mean, guys built these pretty square. And I just haven't been able to really get it on a jig ever or be able to really measure it properly. So now I gotta basically take all the other stuff out, but I gotta get the engine fogged. I gotta, you know, winterize all that stuff, but then once that's done, I'm probably going to pull all the exhaust off, start pulling all the fuel cell crap out, fuel system, rear end. That's probably bent because that got hit pretty hard. Uh, bent again, I should say. Then the front suspension. I got to drop the thing basically down to like the wiring, the chassis, the hoses, and the seat. And that's pretty much it. So. Hopefully I can get that chassis jig done because the only way I can do it is at my brother's house. He has the flat floor and all the piping to do it. And uh, maybe we can get this thing done as fast as possible. I got another uh, full frame sitting at the house, so we can get it done. We just got to get it stripped even more. and It's a pain, but I mean, this is all maintenance I should have been doing to begin with. It's a couple days later. I've still got to do a few things to the car before I really start tearing it down and... Uh getting it ready for a clip and dismantling stuff and um first things first is i got to take care of the engine and that means dropping all the water out of it and fogging it uh i'm gonna be fogging it a little bit different this year i used to use like a marine fogging oil seems to work all right but i'm gonna take uh marvel mystery mystery oil this year and uh put it in the bowl of the carburetor and run it and then spray it right into the carburetor down the down its gullet right down into the choke horn here and just wait until basically it either kills the engine or completely fogs me out of the garage with smoke either way after that's done i'm and get the top end all lubricated but after that's done i'm gonna pull the headers off the exhaust off because all that has to leave anyway and then i'm gonna spray some in the exhaust valves and i'm gonna loosen all the valves open the spark plugs up and then I'm gonna spray WD-40 and stuff into the cylinders and then basically tape it off and seal it up. So let's get to that.
bit of a pain because any exhaust system you put on with a race car is gonna get, you know, humidity and hot cold cycles and it's gonna get rust in the joints and it's gonna make it a little difficult to come apart. So it's a good idea to take it apart every year. I put these band clamps on them, kind of like a friction type clamp. If you put them U-bolt type clamps like this on, I only use those to hold the tailpipes up so it doesn't come off. It's welded to the chassis, but uh, I use these so that you can take them apart easier. It's a good idea to take them apart completely every off season so that you can clean them up and they can come apart for inspection easier. Now, I'm gonna reach down here and I'm gonna pull the drain plug on the block and drain all the water out and then I'm gonna force air into the filler neck and blow all the rest of the water out. I don't use antifreeze, you can. I typically just drain all the water out because that's the bottom of the water jacket. So when you drain that, all the water is gonna be out of the engine. There's nothing left to freeze. You could add a splash of antifreeze down the filler neck if you want. I typically take the radiator out and just drain all the water out of it. No water means no uh, opportunity to freeze. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to take my little, if you have kids, you probably got one of these, and I'm going to fill that with Marvel, and I'm going to spray that into the exhaust ports because I loosened all the valves, so now all the valves are up into the cylinder head, seated. So I'm gonna spray that oil into those so that it sits around the valve, and then I'm gonna seal that off, and I'm gonna spray WD-40 or whatever I can into the, into the spark plug holes, and probably rotate the engine over a couple times just to get it to circulate, and uh, that'll be pretty good, and then I'll put the spark plugs back in, and I'll tape off and stuff rags into the uh, exhaust ports so that that seals that off. I'll probably take the carb off and put some plastic over the top and seal that off too, just so air and water can't get into that if it's humid or whatever happens. I just like to keep my engine as sealed up, oiled down, whatever you can do to keep any sort of temperature or humidity out of the engine during the colder winter months when you're not racing, especially up north at least. It's another day. My uh, cousin came over yesterday and helped me out, my cousin Eric, just kind of stops by on his way home from work and he helped me uh, clean out a little bit of the shop to make my life a little bit easier. I need as much room as possible to try to get this thing done. I mean, we're going to be hauling rear ends out and fuel cells. I'm going to be cutting the rear frame section off. I'm going to be, I'm going to be cutting a lot off and I'm going to need a place to throw it that might not be outside at the time. So he came over and helped me clean all this out. I know it doesn't look like it's really clean, but trust me, it's a lot cleaner than it was because I used to have tires here and here. I had absolute boxes of I don't know what sitting on the shelf, and I didn't know what was in them. And I looked at them, and I said, oh, there's stuff I don't use. So we just threw all of it out. So I put the torch up. I put all the exhaust pieces that were sitting under there from an eBay exhaust kit. Like I got the straight pieces sitting up in the rafters because they're too long to fit in this tub. Put my can there. I got a bunch of stuff I need to sell on eBay sitting up here. Heater, torch parts, transmissions. I got the floater sitting over here and the welder. This will roll out of here. I've been vacuuming too, which is very rare for me. But the floater is over here. I picked that up by myself, which I really wish I hadn't because, man, you can tell how old you are when you try to pick something like that up. That thing is heavy. I should have taken the gears out of it first. It would have made life a lot easier. Um, I got to get rid of this motor sitting here too. I don't have any use for it anymore and it's kind of in the way I could really use this room. I was going to use it as a mock-up to build that other chassis and then all of a sudden the track I was going to race it at got rid of them. So it's like, well, now I have no use for it. Um, unless I built it into an open motor and went, you know, open street stock racing, but if I did, I would have to pay for four tires every race, and I can't do that. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to buy a late model. But anyway, oops, almost dropped the camera. We got to strip this out still. Uh, I got to get the fuel cell out. I got to get the fuel lines, fuel filter, shocks, springs, rear end, drive shaft, the whole 
from basically here back has to come off. I'm still waiting to build the jig because my brother's car is also broken. I took a look at it and uh, maybe I'll post the video here. This was a locked rear. Notice that the pinion is not turning and neither is the other wheel. I don't even know if the transmission's broken, but you can see that, yeah, it's broken there. And um, I think the transmission might be broken too, so that's not good. So we need to move that out of his shop and maybe I'll build that rack so I can jig the car or jig any, any chassis that I have. So it's it's kind of, you know, we're at a point where we're like, we could probably clip the car without a jig, but do we want to? You know what I mean? It would probably come out fine if I just do it by measurement. It would take a lot longer. But if I build the rack, then I know that I'll have something flat and level to put the chassis on. At the same time, I have to strip the entire chassis down to nothing. I would need that engine out of here so I can put this engine in here. And it's... <laughs> I'm so glad I'm starting this early. We literally stopped racing two weeks ago. And I'm already at this point where I'm like, okay, where do I make cuts? What do I do here? We'll get into all that when I finally make the decision as to what I'm gonna do. Uh, we've done chassis work by ourselves before and never needed a jig, but you really kind of want one because then you know you're working with a flat level surface that you can measure off of and work with. However, you have to strip everything off the car because how is one person or two people when my cousin shows up or brother or whoever's going to come and help me? Um, how are we going to lift it up? Because we're not 20 anymore. We're pushing 40. So <laughs> get kind of fat and old and everything kind of hurts. So I got to continue stripping this thing to start. Um, I'll show you what I'm kind of thinking about doing. I went and took a look at my brother's car and he's got a new rear clip on his car because he got smashed by somebody and it bent the whole thing and he was out for a few races getting that fixed but his got cut oh i can't move my camera in here his got cut like right here ish now i know that's behind where this lower trailing arm mount is and it'll be like here so if you cut it there you see you missed the mount but my whole problem is, is what if it's bent here? You know what I mean? If it's bent here or here, where I think it's bent. I think it's bent like here. So I've got two options. The first one is cut it where my brother's was here. If the whole, you know, trailing arm you can see over there. If that and, sorry, it's hard to zoom and this measure out like even because I'll measure the chassis crossways and like side to side and stuff. And we'll see if this thing actually measures out properly. And if these lower mounts actually measure out, then I'll figure out a way to like use a right angle, like square or something and cut here and cut straight across, probably using this thing here that I just bought from Harbor Freight. Just take and cut, you know, one line straight there and then use a sawzall and that that cut as a guide and just kind of go straight through it. Do the same on the other side and then cut the new chassis exactly the same way and then it should be pretty equal and then we'll just kind of, you know, measure it out and then weld it together and plate it and everything. But um, the more I look at this car the worse it gets. I think I've showed you that a few times, but man, I stand here and I look down and I'm like, wow, this thing is twisted. So when I do build the, the new car or the new clip, I'm going to totally redesign the rear bumper. I want it to not be so solid mounted. It's solid there. It's solid here. This got just kind of patched together for a race and then it got ripped off again. Um, so I don't want to build it as solid because I think if I get hit in a back bumper brace, that's hurting the car because it's so far back. It's like a pendulum and it's just making it easier to bend. So I think I'm going to use lower grade tubing there 
just as a body brace and then just kind of hook the bumper around a little bit just so it you know it stays away from the body maybe it won't bend or hurt the chassis as bad because i think that's half of my problem so i think it's just built too strong so let's get to stripping this thing out we now that we have a little bit of space to put spare parts and that'll be a start well i goofed and double pushed the shutter button for the time lapse but i got this out you know, I got the two weights or all the lead or whatever the heck was under here out. Uh, I got the shocks out. I got the fuel line and stuff off. I got the transponder off. Basically, everything here is getting cut off. I'm considering not taking the rear end out yet because I don't know if I want to, you know, put this thing back on wheels and roll it. Uh, I, I also have to figure out what I want to do with the engine if I want to take engine and transmission out. So, I mean, I got a lot of time to think about it. So I got the jack under it because I was about to start unbolting it. And then I thought, well, how are you going to get it out of here if you're going to build a jig? So, or at least a work table. So that's kind of on the burner right now. Uh, I'm still thinking about what I should really do. So, again, it's only two weeks past our last race date, and we go racing again in like six months. So, I've already got the, you know, rear frame section. I have a full front frame section as well. I actually have a full frame, uh, even with the middle part. Uh, I've got the other chassis outside, which I still think is bent personally, um, just by looking at it. So... <laughs> This is the indecision that you go through when doing something like this, especially when you're probably going to do it by yourself. It's a few days later. I'm on my way to my uh, brother's shop. I've got a full frame over there that I'm probably going to go pick up. If I don't have the material to build the jig, I'm kind of doubting it at this point unless it got moved somewhere. Um, so we're going to go search for that. And then I'm going to... If we don't have it, I'm just going to cut the frame in half and bring it home. But uh, at this point, we still got a lot of time left, and I'll probably end this video uh, pretty soon so that I can make a separate one about putting the frame on and putting a new clip on the car. So we'll see you when we get over there, and hopefully we can find what we need. And if not, oh well. Well, I forgot that this Dodge has the single worst cup holders in history. It's still raining. It's too wet to film or else my stuff's going to get wet. But here it is. I brought this home like eight years ago when my wife was pregnant. And um, she didn't appreciate the ride because the trailer has no suspension. But it's not so bad. I mean, it's been sitting in a field for 20 plus years. And then I got it. So it's been sitting for probably eight more. Um, it's just got surface rust. It actually looks pretty good, even near the body mounts. Even though the leaves are covering it up. Usually those are completely rotted out. That's just a little thin. Hopefully this thing is straight. Hopefully it never saw any accidents on the road. I mean, I'm looking at it and the gaps in the wheels are very, very similar. So it looks like we're in really good shape. There's some frame stock here and there. So we're in good shape for that. I'm going to buy that off my brother. Um, but I'll end up with a stock front clip if I need it. And I got a rear clip that's going to go in and still kind of debating where I want to go with this whole jig idea but I don't have the steel to do it after all apparently I miscalculated with the amount that my dad bought 20 something years ago and we don't have it so I think now I'm wrestling with the idea do I bring it to this shop because this shop has a really flat floor or do I just do it by measurement so we'll figure that out so I'm back in the shop and I'd purchased because I'd never owned one before. I just purchased this at Harbor Freight. Cheap little pipe and tubing notcher because I'm sick of literally hand fish mouthing every single pipe when I build cars. And I'm gonna need to do a lot of pipes. You can see everything I'm gonna have to do. 
So I bought one of these cheapo Harbor Freight jobbies and I bought this. Just a Diablo, no sponsor, but you know, carbide inch and three quarter hole saw. It's a little expensive and I'm like, I bought the hole saw before I bought the notcher because I'm stupid. So the hole saw comes with this proprietary bit, apparently, that only Diablo makes that I didn't realize comes with this mandrel whatever that you have to put in your drill. So I'm like, well, I have no idea. This thing comes with this expansion piece that goes on the end of this piece here, but apparently I didn't know it had that. So I'm thinking I'm screwed. I'm thinking I just spent 25 bucks on a hole saw that I can't use because there's no way that this will fit with that. Well, you're wrong. I tapped threads into the top of this because this piece was perfectly drilled for a half inch by 20 thread. Now, granted, this tap set I got, again, from Harbor Freight because I'm cheap, I have a half inch by 20 tap. So guess what? Now, this thread's on. Oh, I actually oiled it, so it spins. Sorry, I gotta get this. There we go. It's a little off to the center, but bear with me. See, now, that will spin on. Hang on. I need like four hands. And it seats right up against the top of that. So you tighten it up, and guess what? Now you've got a hole saw that works. I swear my hackery knows no bounds. So when it comes to this thing, I think um, we don't have the we don't have the steel or anything necessary to build the jig after all. So I might just completely yank the drivetrain out of it and strip the suspension off of it and get it all the way down to a bare chassis essentially. And uh, I might bring it over my brother's where he's got a nice flat floor and I might do it over there or I don't know, I might do it here. So I'll get the rest of the suspension and stuff off it later. It's dark. I'm hungry. I need to clean this 
unholy mess up. This thing does not roll, and I hate it, but it's the only one I got, so I can't say that. I got the, as you saw, drive line out of it. It's just kind of sitting here. I only snapped off two spark plugs right there. They're sitting on the ground over here. They were only, you know, brand new. But uh, I got a bunch of old ones I'll just plug that hole back up with. I was not prepared for today because it was 70 plus degrees and it's nearly November in Connecticut. Not ready. Not ready for warm weather. It's not really that warm. It's just that I was starting to get used to cold. Anyway, um, she's almost stripped completely. That way, if we take it to a chassis jig, they'll be able to touch it. I don't have the money for that, though. Or if I take it to my brother's house where he has a nice flat level floor, I can check it out there. But it, again, I still got to strip the suspension. I'm not going to include that. I don't care. I got to get this video out so you can watch something. Um, it's basically just uppers, lowers, sway bar, steering done. And uh, that's all for stripping. So that'll be the end of part one of our winter maintenance episode. I'm tired. I'm not ready for this return to warmth, but I'm not going to complain. Maybe I should have wore shorts. So um, thank you all again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you can. It's free and it helps me grow the channel to the point where maybe YouTube someday will help me with my racing budget and their advertisement. But anyway, tell your racing buddies if you like what you see, go back through my catalog and see if there's anything that piques your interest and uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you like. Uh, I don't have any money to just go out and do things, so you're just kind of seeing me do work. But um, again, I greatly appreciate it, and uh, I will see you next time.